talking about matrices today. This is a brand new semester. It's a brand new unit. And I think most of you are really going to enjoy this little transition. We are going away from things like the unit circle and sine and cosine and tangent and triangles and all that good stuff for just a little while. We may actually circle back around to some of those things, but definitely not as abstract as we were dealing with them already. It will be more on an application basis. So anyway, without further ado, let's talk about matrices. So a matrix is one matrix. But if you start talking about more than one, we use the word matrices. It's one of those little language things where we change the X to a C and one make it plural. So a matrix would just be one more than one is matrices. All right. So first thing I want to talk about really is what is a matrix? And no, I'm not talking about the matrix, the movie. That'd be kind of cool, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about a rectangular array of numbers. And those numbers do have a particular name, and we're going to talk about that. So you can see down here there are some examples of matrices, and we're going to do some operations of those, but for right now, let's talk about what matrices are made of. So let me just write one for us here. I'm just going to make up some magic words, uh, some magic numbers. All right, so matrices have several things we need to know as to what they're called. All right, matrices are made up of rows, and rows are horizontal, and they're made up of columns. All right, so rows by columns. I always remember that those nice houses like down on Green Street in Gainesville they have those beautiful columns, and columns are what support that roof or that porch. So you can remember that the columns are vertical in orientation. So that might help you a little bit. All right, so those are your columns, and then your rows would be these. All right, so the things actually inside of the matrix, these brackets, the numbers themselves are called elements. Okay, so we've got rows, columns, and then the elements would be 1, 0, negative 2, and 8. Then we also call a matrix by its dimensions. Dimensions are always given rows by columns, and this Notation is a little bit like uh, on a truck that's four wheel drive. You know, it's a four by four, all right? So, or a two by four piece of lumber. So, what you want to do is figure out how many rows you have. And I'm sorry, I kind of cluttered it up a tad, but you have two rows and then how many columns? One, two. So, this is a two by two matrix. What I want to do on these examples, right quick, is just Kind of just run through what the dimensions are on each one of these before we do anything else. So the dimensions of number one would be three rows and one column. So this is a three by one. For both of these, it's identical, but there are two rows and three columns. So these are both two by threes. On number three, we've got two rows and one column on each matrix and then the last one we've got one two three rows and two columns on each matrix all right so we talked about what a matrix is it's different parts or components how to give the dimensions of a matrix now what i want to do is do some matrix operations and we're going to add subtract and multiply but it's not really multiplying matrices yet this little number outside of this matrix is called a scalar it's kind of like when you learn in geometry about similar figures 
and the scale factor. So maybe one triangle is five times larger than the pre-image. So the scale factor of that would be five. So this particular number is called a scalar because it is going to adjust the size of the elements by that amount, each element. Uh, you could also think about it as a dilation in geometry of a segment. So if you had one of the points on the segment were 2, 2, and we were dilating about a scale factor of 5, that would become 10, 10. So same kind of thing. It's just a multiplying of the elements. So this is called a scalar multiplication question. It's not true matrix multiplication. That's later, and it's definitely a more involved process. But for scalar multiplication, all you do is multiply each element by the scalar, and you're done. So that would be negative 30, 15, and negative 15. So we write our answer as a matrix, and the dimensions of the matrix will be the same as they were in the problem. All right, so speaking of dimensions being the same, that is the rule for addition and subtraction of matrices. And matrices must have equal dimensions. So matrices must have equal dimensions or identical dimensions. To add or subtract them. Scalar really doesn't matter because it's just a scalar. Um, but when you're trying to combine two matrices into one, definitely the dimensions are going to matter. All right, so if both of these are two by threes, that means that this expression will be defined. So that's why it gives you this option right undefined for expressions that are undefined in the directions. Because if you can't add them together because the dimensions are not the same, well, that's not defined. And then we would give that as an answer. But we don't have to worry about that. All right. So with this one in particular, right out of the gate, we're kind of doing one that's a little bit hard. But that's all right because these problems are really aren't technically difficult much at all. But when you're subtracting or adding two matrices all you're doing is you are adding or subtracting corresponding elements now we are subtracting so let's be real careful and wherever excuse me whatever you get for that number when you add or subtract those elements goes in the same place as those elements were that you added or subtracted so negative four minus negative six that becomes a negative 4 plus 6. That is a positive 2. You can see how it would be easy to mess this up with that subtraction there. But we've got to subtract every time. So negative 1 minus 3 to negative 4. And 5 minus 3 is 2. So I'm just subtracting corresponding elements. 4 minus 1 is 3. Negative 3 minus 0 is negative three and lastly negative six minus three is negative nine so that right there would be your answer for the matrix subtraction question all right moving on i got another one here for you this is an addition example and again if the dimensions are not identical or equal then we can't even do this but they are i should have had this be number two right Negative 5 plus 6, that's 1, and 0 plus 2 is 2. So our answer is still a 2 by 1 matrix. Okay, last one. We've got a little bit different situation here. We are dealing with two matrices that have equal dimensions. I do notice this little fella right here. He is acting as a scalar. Now, it is up to you how you approach this problem. I actually am going to write down more on this one than I did on the others. This problem notoriously will confuse people because the scalar is a negative. So you've got two choices. Choice one would be to distribute negative three as the scalar. Okay. Choice two would be to distribute three only and keep the subtraction sign in between 
those matrices. I'll tell you my choice personally, and this is just a personal preference. preference. It is not the only way to do it. I personally just like to go ahead and get the negative over with. So I will usually go ahead and distribute a negative three into that matrix. Now, if I do that, what am I going to have to do? Like, where's that negative going? Let's see if it'll come back here. Where is that negative going if I distribute it through? Well, it's going into that matrix. So I've still got to combine them. So if I distribute a negative three, I'm really adding these matrices together. If you want to leave it as a subtraction problem, just distribute three. It will work out the same way. But again, I just kind of like to go ahead and get the negative part over with. So that's why I lean towards doing it this way. The other way is just as good, I promise. All right, so when we add these together, we're going to get a 2 by 3. And we're just adding corresponding elements. So that'll be negative 7. Here we'll have an 11. Negative 9. 21. Then let's see, negative 5 and 3. And negative 4 and negative 3 makes a negative 7. Sorry, you can't really see that well. All right. So let's try again this brown. It's a little bit better. All righty. So there you have it. Um, if you don't necessarily think you'll remember to do what I did here, go ahead and pause the video and try it by leaving this as a subtraction symbol and only distributing 3. Here's what you can't do, though. You can't distribute negative 3 and still put a minus there because that is canceling out the subtraction in the first place. So you can't do both, but you got to choose one or the other.